Welcome back to our Rice Prime Time. I'm Somna Sambo, and of course, I'm being joined right now by our own uh, Rice analyst, uh, Professor Abiodo Adini, to help us uh, take a look at what uh, some of my guests have been saying here. Thank you so much, Prof. Really good to see you. Well, let's start with the catastrophic events uh, in uh, Ibadan, the Oyo State capital mm -hmm. in southwest Nigeria. I mean, uh, so to some people, it looked like the end of the world. Some people thought it was rapture in uh, mm -hmm. Ibadan yesterday. Uh, can actually be very devastating, but it's all nested into um, the question of health and safety. You know, very important um, segment that we often ignore in this country. It involves a lot of things, the kind of care that you have for your environment, the kind of concern you have for security, and of course um, the tendency or the predilection of citizens to report what looks like potential danger, you know. But again, we have we're in a system where people um, you know, have become desperate and in the process they become criminalized, you know. So we're having criminal desperation, you know, in the bid to make ends meet. And in trying to make ends meet, they forget about health and safety, mm -hmm. and which can be very endangering, not just to themselves, but the populace um, at large. And that's what we see happening in the Badon, for instance. Uh, those kind of materials, the explosives that they talk about, shouldn't be something that should be found, you know, where they are homes, where they are residents, you know. Where people live is a priced place, you know, uh, where maximum con concern should be um, exercised or given, you know, um, to uh, protecting them by making sure that dangerous, um, dangerous materials are not stored around the place at all. And of course, we know that citizens were already aware, residents were already aware of these materials. Yeah, you know, the I mean, kind they, of job they, they said they actually knew this person. Yeah, the kind of job they were, they were engaged in. But because of criminal desperation, because of maybe sympathy or the ability of those ones to silence citizens, you know, or maybe some connection, you know, possibly um, with some authorities that could have helped to nip this in the board. How know, about by carefree attitude, them. Prof? I mean, lots of yeah, Nigerians, yeah, it's all, it's once all, it happens, they just say, oh, well, nothing concerns me. Absolutely. But it's, now people have to pay, I mean, about 25 houses, yeah, yeah. people's live mm -hmm. savings, being put in buildings and all of a sudden these buildings I mean, are nowhere lives. Life homes for that matter. Life homes, you know, it's not very easy for people to raise homes in this country and you raise it and overnight it's blown off, you know. But what about life? You know, most importantly, yeah. what about those who have been maimed for life? You know, that's also very, very fundamental. Yeah, I mean, you could hear the NEMA yeah. officials yeah. saying yeah. that, I mean, it's been really, really yeah. difficult yeah, even for the thing again is, uh, whatever action we're going to take, it shouldn't just be um, one-off. You know, we need sustainability, you know, um, of our processes, you know, so that that this kind of thing would not repeat itself again. You know, the bane of our system is that when we have these occurrences, we just react on a knee-jerk basis, on an episodic basis, and then thereafter we go back to sleep. You know, which is yeah, actually someone difficult actually, to our safety. Someone our actually health. told me that in Nigeria, all you need is another big story to uh, blow up in the media, Very and then this one goes yeah, down. Yeah. Just but like last we week, we're talking about social investments mm -hmm. and all of that. And this week, I mean, all these catastrophic events. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Prof, talk to me about regulatory failure here. The mm -hmm. Office of the National Security Advisor is actually charged with giving licenses and all of that to uh, mm -hmm. people who engage in mining and all of that using uh, dynamite and all sorts of explosives. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that we hardly monitor these things very well? How yeah. could and, uh, somebody be illegally mm -hmm. storing this sort of, I mean, uh, 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 war-grade kind of equipment, if you, well, if you, you may call know, it that the, way. The way our system is structured, you know, everything working in a network. Those fellows who are engaged in that business are probably not alone. They have individuals in sections of the society, maybe powerful individuals who are probably, who are sympathetic to them, if not maybe benefit, benefiting directly. But the gratifying thing in the circumstances that very recently we had information, uh, the Minister for Steel, uh, sorry, for uh, mines. Okay, you know, solid. Um, okay, yeah, mines and steel. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 mines. Um, the journalist, Mr. Dele Alake. Okay, Dele Alake, you know, solid minerals. Actually, solid minerals. Actually, mm. withdrawing the licenses of many people. I'm not sure what has uh, come out of that action. And of course, the action was to streamline mining such that um, illegal, we told you we can reduce illegal involvement in the very lucrative trade, realizing how it can be, you know, another source. Um, for income in an atmosphere, in a, in a situation where we're thinking about diversifying our revenue base away from oil. You know, uh, solid minerals is very, very important, you know, uh, in addition to agriculture, in addition to other soft, you know, quick wins that we can make at the level of portfolio investment and all of that. Yeah. So all these things, you know, have to come into place you know, on, on, the, on a good slate, you know, before we well. can be talking about 
um, a safe, sound, and secure environment. Well, uh, President Tinbo has already asked security agencies to do their job, but let's just move on to politics now. Yeah. Uh, the APC is saying there's no zoning in Edo uh, State mm -hmm. for its uh, candidate to emerge, and that um, uh, there should be some sort of uh, consensus yeah. among 29 aspirants who are That's seeking right. this uh, uh, golden prize ticket. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you I, make of uh, those decisions? First of all, maybe we should put things in context, um, Somna. Edo politics is, has been an interesting one uh, since in, in the, uh, from the dawn of democracy in 1999. Interesting in the character of aspirants they have always been able to produce. Um, it's one of the states that you can describe as the shining light of the country in terms of the quality of aspirants, the quality of their governorship contestants. Their pedigree, that is, you know, initially we had um, you know, Igbenedion, the lucky Igbenedion, his pedigree yeah, was sound. The Ford Republic. That's fine. Then after him, we had Professor Osumbo, Professor of Law. Then eventually, we had um, veteran labor leader, you know, one of the best orators that this country has ever produced, um, Adam Soshomale. And now we're having a, a technocrat, we're having a technocrat and investment banker, Gary Sobaseki. You know, now again, we are likely to have. Um, another quality candidate, depending on the choices the parties make. Labour Party is likely to feature um, a party, right? A PDP That's is most able to yeah, yeah. <laughs> find his PDP way is most likely to feature Asui Gedalo. But the APC is the question we have to ask ourselves now. Um, and I've looked at the candidates, you know, uh, in the populating the APC. I've looked at uh, Claire Magba, you know, Prince, former minister, uh, former Chevron Walker, you know, very competent, obviously, a very promising candidate. I've also seen Kasima Kwewa is also there in the mix. Yeah. And of course, a professor <laughs> of law again, Osumbo oh, is there. Yeah. But in all this, really... And the, a candidate in the last election, yeah. uh, Professor, uh, uh, no, I mean, Pastor Osage is, is Yeah, he's also there. Yeah. But if you look at the mix, really, you need somebody, APC you probably need to bring up somebody too, who is going to be, who is going to be able to match an Asui Egodalo, or maybe to some extent too, the former NBA president, mm. Akpacha. And if you're looking at it, really, if you want me to make my choice, I will make it. I think I want to go for somebody who um, has got, you know, um, who is current, you know, who is recent in terms of influence, network as well, so that once more, Edo can serve us with quality candidates. Uh, and and person might, looks who like might that be? Clem Agba, <laughs> Prince Clem Agba, in my own well, opinion. he has got a lot. <laughs> he's the only person, by the way, that has bought yeah. a form right now. Okay, but uh, okay. people say that he's got a lot to battle with. Because, uh, like you would have heard my yeah. guests saying that they have Comrade Adam Soshomole, who is now a senator, mm. uh, to actually help provide some sort of guidance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wouldn't he be accused of uh, trying to impose uh, a candidate if he decides on one? And uh, uh, considering what happened with Obaseki when he brought him and they had issues, aren't we going to see that happen in the APC too? Yeah, but there's nothing he would do, you know, as an elder, state, as a statesman, you know, as a frontline political figure, that he will not be criticized. And of course, he also need his what uh, for APC to get it right in terms of who they present as a candidate that will be able to match and as he would allow, considering his background, his influence, and against the background of accusations that the governor is supportive of him. And of course, so, someone else who, you remember Akpata took um, uh, uh, spring surprises. Do not forget that Labour Party won a uh, those state in the presidential election. So uh, the role of Oshomole is unmistakable. He still has a fundamental role. And whether or not he's accused rightly or wrongly, it, it will see, it's still the character of politics. But I sympathize with, with people of Edo Central, but I'm aware, I've read it in places that they do not have the number. The numbers are actually in the north and south. The influence are also there. Yeah, but the north and south have held these positions. Yeah. Shouldn't there be some sort of justice and fair play? But justice uh, and fair play well, <laughs> can always come. It can always come not when um, you are occupying, um, you are, when you are in the front row. Um, you, can, uh, you can also be very supportive from behind and probably um, make your own mark as well. Then when the time becomes even more appropriate, then of course you um, can get a shot. Do not forget, look at what happens at the national level. Um, if we to be very critical, the, the, the Nigerian of Igbo extraction should have succeeded President Buhari. But of course, there were questions around numbers, there were questions around network, and the Bola Tinubuna now, now came up and became president. 
I mean, we are seeing that situation likely to be replicated in Edo State. Yes, yeah, Edo Center people, they've been largely marginalized in, in parentheses, you know, but of course the influence, the numbers are in the north and in the south. And, and maybe that's why APC is looking away from consensus and thinking of primaries. And if they are thinking of primaries, they are thinking of credibility, influence, network, you are looking at Edo North, irrespective of um, the dominance of personalities uh, from that place in national government in positions now. And if you are, we want to pinpoint individuals, a difficult decision for me to make because Prince Afegba is my friend, Kasim, that is. But yeah. of course, I'm sorry. And I'm he's choosing, also from Edo North. Yeah, I'm too. choosing Prince Claire Magba <laughs> over him, you know, because I'm just looking at it from a very critical uh, perspective, you know, without necessarily being emotional or sentimental. Yeah, so if, for example, the APC candidate emerges from Edo North yeah. and you've got a potential uh, Edo South candidate coming out of PDP and uh, Edo South candidate coming out of Labour Party. Uh, how will it play out? Actually, I don't see, and see, I don't, I don't see, um, you know, uh, PDP presenting somebody from Edo South, you know, because we already have uh, 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 Godwin Obaseki, and of course, um, obviously, we are seeing signs that is supportive of Asue Godalo, who is by all means a very competent. Yeah, some person. people are saying that he doesn't have the capacity. That look, <laughs> once there's a gang up in PDP, there's a likelihood that Asue. Yeah, they, they, have, they have their own. The they have their own crisis, but the crisis. That may likely a match from APC if is if they don't choose um, the right person, somebody who can galvanize support, somebody who can command respect, whose reputation um, is clear, you know, as crystal. That's the only thing that can happen. But I also know that political parties are very good in uh, reconciliation, in reintegrating themselves after every major crisis. And APC is in a position to do that now because they have the presidency. I can uh, see uh, the presidency, uh, right. um, you know, reigning in on those <laughs> who might be dissenting. I'm bringing in federal might into <laughs> yes, it. The well, uh, it's good to know that the APC has told uh, all these aspirants that they will be signing some sort of yeah. bond uh, so as not to go to court. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, if the APC picks someone from Edo Central, would that be a strong factor too? Oh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, we do respect the people of Edo Central, despite their qualification. We will have someone like Osumbo. Very it might be a disservice, you know, for... Um, their chances, as the case could be, because they will be dividing votes in the north and south. Considering that, so as we go down, is also from Edo Central. All right, we must thank you so much, uh, Professor Abiadun Adeni is a rise analyst and is also a lecturer at uh, uh, Bayes University. He's always been here to help provide insight uh, to our political talks here and there. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of Arise Primetime. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Sam Nassando.